Back to Austin, Texas. Let's head downstairs. Join Jim Knox with head coach Mac Brown. Knoxie. Any concern your team may be overlooking Louisiana Lafayette tonight to next week's showdown against Ohio State? None. They've done a good job. They've got a great team. Our theme was take dead aim on, on the goal at, at hand, and that's this one tonight. So we're going to play well. All right, best of luck, Mac. Joel? Thanks, Jim. All right, Jim. Thanks, Mac. Sean Comiskey, senior. From LaPlace, Louisiana. Man, it's headed in the direction of Terrell Brown, who's nine yards into the end zone. That's where he'll stay. Louisiana Lafayette, confidence in their defense, obviously. They won the toss and deferred to the second half. Ben Chunk, Kiyosera, starting 11. Getting the call as usual for the Texas Longhorns out of Houston's Madison High School. Boy, City Houston's been great for this team. Talk about Selvin Young out of Houston's Jersey Village in just a moment. But what a phenomenal finish for Vince Young, the Rose Bowl MVP, and what he did over the last six games of the regular season, including the Rose Bowl, and the way he led this team. Five touchdowns in total, four on the ground of the Rose Bowl game. Selvin Young in the backfield with him. Man, Selvin weaving his way. Good game. He won a man on his back to about the 25-yard line. Quartank with the hit. Offensive line, well, you've got two first-team All-Big 12ers at the tackle spot, Scott and Blaylock. Four starters, in fact, from last year was Stuttered and Allen, and Senline, the center. Young, Ahmad Hall, Lima Sweet, Brian Carter, the skilled guys, along with not David Clayton Thomas, but David Thomas, <laughs> the tight end out of Wolford, Texas. There you go. Second and five for the Longhorns. Morgan and Adams are the corners. Terrell Fenton, Jamarcus Smith, the safeties. And it is Wes Simo, a real Cajun playing for the Ragers. Little dump off, good yardage to the wide receiver, making the tight end, David Thomas. He's right at another first down. He's short by a couple of yards at the 38. Keys coming in, Dave. Well, Joel, they want to dominate the line of scrimmage. They're 59 and 0 under Mac Brown when they outrush the opponent. They want to establish their depth tonight. You can't be selfish at Texas. A lot of people are going to play. They want to be efficient. No self-destruction. No pre-snap penalties. Lining up wrong. Jumping before the snap count. Those type of things. Uh, just be clean and play smart. Working out of the gun, three wide receivers with Selvin Young, the single to the backfield. Second and short, and Vince's first carry of the year. Waiting for the block. Well, he got enough for the first down. Out across the 42, he's got a first down in a gain of four. Smith, the cornerback. This team was second in the nation in rushing last year, Dave. They've, they've got a phenomenal, well, he's like a running back, quarterback who can get it done on the ground as we saw. He's got better than 3,000 yards over the last two years on the ground. No other quarterback has that many yards on the ground. And he's averaging, you know, well over six and a half yards per attempt. So you talk about rush efficiency, you're you're better than halfway to a first down every time this guy runs the football. And, and when he decides to run on his own and create, sometimes those are the best plays, better than the ones that are called. From the 42, his first throw of the new season. And an easy one with a pitch and catch. Goes out to Lyman Swede. And he's right at the marker in front of Michael Adams. Lima Swede, a year older, a year more mature. Here, here he is up top, 6'5". Look at the catching radius on this guy. 6'5 with long arms. You get the ball anywhere near his body, he's going to secure it. Nice uh, coverage, though. The hit was made immediately. No yards after catch. But 6'5", 215 pounds with like a 35, 36-inch wingspan. That's a nice, nice receiving radius for the quarterback. Yeah, there's so much talent for Mac Brown in his eighth year offensively now, led by that young man who's only a junior, don't forget, Vince Young. And Mac Brown had the second-best rushing attack of the nation, as I mentioned last year. They were seventh in total offense, 464 yards a game, 12th best in scoring. You say, well, how are they going to top it? Well, everybody's a little bit better <laughs> a year later around Vince Young. And right there, that gentleman, Mac Brown, 70 wins, 
19 losses here at Texas. Almost 79% winning percentage. That's getting it done. He got the first down at the 47 of the Raging Cajuns. End around, up to the toss. Ramon's Tanner. Oh, oh. There he goes. And will they get him? Finally inside the 25. We could say he's a breakaway threat, but that's a severe understatement. Fenton and Morgan caught up with him. They want to make sure he gets 10 touches a game, Dave. Well, the reason they want to do that, Joel, is for his career, he's averaging almost nine yards a touch. And watch him. He's going he's gonna to work his way back. Little bit, little nice little run action. And here he comes. Locking inside, little pitch. Watch the movement. Watch the acceleration. Now he's in third gear. They want, they want to get him, the football, in space. First time we've seen him in the eye. Big block by the fullback. Oh. Selvin Young put it on the ground, though, and the Raging Cajuns, did they come up with it? It looks like it. Michael Adams close to send line, tried to get it away the center, but it is going to Louisiana Lafayette. Well, everybody wondered about the durability of Selvin Young, the junior out of Houston. He gave up the ball early. Well, what you have to do is, is establish ball security. No violent hit, reaching in there and ripping at the football. That's just a heads-up play, and the ball's out. You have to you have to squeeze the pig. You can't be holding it that loosely. That's not some violent contact whatsoever. And that's just reaching in there and, 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 and ripping it out of there. Michael Adams did a good job taking the football away. The Raging Cajuns dodge a bullet, first takeaway of the game. And that's one area they want to be strong. They want to win the turnover battle today. In the eye formation, Jerry Babb, the quarterback, the junior from right in Lafayette, and trying to bounce outside the tailback, Chester Johnson, a yard maybe, the junior from Shreveport. Offensively, our Kia Serra starting 11. For the Raging Cajuns, Jerry Babb, and his head coach told us, Ricky Vussey, he is a true leader. He's the type of guy you want to go to battle with. And he's a guy mature beyond his years, 6'3", 220-pound junior. Last year hit 58%, throwing for better than 2,300 yards. But they're hoping they have better balance overall in their offense this year with more of a ground game. And wow. the open, Babb's on his way down. Back of the three, it's a sack early. Roderick Wright, the man we were talking about, the potential All-American, another guy out of Houston's A. Leaf Hastings High School. The rest of the lineup up front, Chance, Falter, Hodges, Ernest, and Cox, real young on the left side of that offensive line. In fact, Falters is a true freshman. Johnson will end into the backfield. Wide receivers Jackson and Robbins. And Eric Jones out of Austin's Westwood High School. So Eric Jones back home. The yeah, redshirt freshman gets a start for the Raging Cajuns. Texas rushed four on that prior snap, and they all met at the quarterback simultaneously. Chester Johnson right into the five, and that is it. It was almost a handoff <laughs> in the backfield. It was amazing the way Drew Kelson was there at the point of the handoff. So three and out with a stop. Penetration and disruption. That is Gene Chiswick, the new defensive coordinator's mantra. Get after people. He is a disciple of Monty Kiffin, arguably the most highly acclaimed defensive coordinator of the last decade or two. And Chiswick gets after people philosophically. And the punt coming to Aaron Ross. Ross from the 47. He's got some room. And he gets a block. Inside the 40, spinning to the 35. So great field position for the Longhorns. Now can they hang on to the football? It's scoreless so far. It's of all time, the state capital, Austin, Texas. It is a hot, a muggy one. There's weather, I think, about 25 miles away, Dave. We've got the potential for rain. It was a real sunny day, beautiful day this morning. Clouds started to roll in. I don't know if anything's going to rain on Vince Young this season, though. I'll tell you, Vince Young is just such a unusual athlete. I mean, the things he can do with the body size he has are just ridiculous. Young after the play fake. And wide open again. Brian Carter's got it inside the 25. He's got a first down. Well, this is the first year of instant replay in the Big 12 Conference, Dave, and I think it's a great idea as we look at some of the things will be initiated by the man in right. the booth. Don't forget, it's all coming from upstairs. It all comes from upstairs, nothing from downstairs up, and the alternate official is up in the booth assisting the replay official, and the ball, uh, the play's reviewable until the ball is snapped, so 
those are the key uh, the key points. Plus, it has to be undisputable evidence to reverse a call. If it's questionable at all, the call in the field stands. Vince Young, wide open, back of the end zone, but he fell down. Lima Swede trying to get behind Michael Adams. He had some space originally, and then it closed. And the young man out of Dallas is Kimball High School. Michael Adams ended up doing a good job. Well, what you have is a size mismatch. We already talked about Lima Sweet at 6'5". Michael Adams, uh, that, that's, a, that's a tough matchup for him. At five, Michael eight. Adams at 5'8". And, and in the slot, Swede at 6'5", working it to the back of the end zone. Michael Adams, he's allowed that spot on the field just like Lima Sweet is. Sweet tried to give him that stiff arm. Trying to make a good move there. Vince Young, quarterback draw all the way. How nifty is that first move? Out of bounds, short of the first down, but he still gets eight. And I'm talking about the original cut over to the right side to get away from an ankle tackle, Dave. It's so it's so effortless, Joel. And the, the right one key is when, when Vince Young has the football, you better block down the field. Nice cut block. And watch Ramon's tail right there. Ramon's Taylor gets a block on the perimeter, trying to get Vince Young yards. One thing you have to realize, every time the ball is in his hands, it can be a home run. So you get on your blocks, you sustain your blocks, you do everything you possibly can to give him room. Hey, look out. Number 37's in the game. True freshman, Grapevine, Texas. Henry Melton, 6'3", 270. Woo. First career carry. Man. Take him with you, big boy. He's got him down to the 11. Have you ever seen a specimen like that, Dave? In the backfield, no less. That's got to be scary coming at you. And that's the tailback now. You know, they're not playing him at fullback. They're not playing him at tight end or defensive end like they thought they might have to do. He's got the light feet like Jerome Bettis. He's like a dancing bear out there, and a 270-pound bear at that, depending on what he ate for pregame meal. So this man, this man, I like him because he likes the groceries. Well, first thing you said to Mac Brown is, I like him already. I want to meet him at the training table. Got to go to the training table with the man. Young spreads him out with Shelvin Young in the backfield. Design all the way, and Vince is on his way down. Taking a shot along the way. Rodney Hardaway, as he stood up, leveled in the sophomore from Tyler, Texas. You know, one, one thing that the Louisiana Lafayette wanted to do, and it's against your football principles that you're taught your whole life. Watch as guys take shots at Vince Young. I mean, everybody's focusing on him. Every, you're going to take a shot on him. Instead of breaking down, just sell out and grabs cloth, grab an ankle, do anything until teammates arrive. And usually you're taught to break down. Every time a defender breaks down in front of Vince Young, he makes him look silly in space. So sell out and take your shot, run through him. Shelvin Young has a lane. There he goes. And he's in. Touchdown, Texas. For psychological purposes, Selvin Young needed it after missing all of last year with an ankle injury and then putting the ball on the ground to start a new season. Not only missing all of last year, missing spring of this year. So he has a lot of rust and dust that he's trying to knock off. And, and crossing the goal line for his first rushing touchdown of the season will help, imme help immeasurably, particularly after having the ball stripped away from him. But it all started up front. That offensive line, whoo! He took control at the line of scrimmage, I'm telling you. Richmond McGee hasn't tried a field goal or a point after in his career, and Missed not it. exactly an auspicious debut. Yeah, he pushed that right immediately. That's first T-itis. Blocked it out to the right, but still the Longhorns on the board. Look at the O-line. Look at him sustaining blocks, finishing blocks, and Selvin Young says, thank you, big boys. I'm lowering my pads, and I'm taking it to the house. Almost halfway through the first quarter, Selvin Young with the touchdown run. Texas doesn't get the extra point. Our Toyota scoring drive. They had great field position to begin with after the nice return by Aaron Harris. And now Richmond McGee, who missed the extra point, will kick it away. Michael Adams back deep, along with Jason Cherry. Why didn't we get one of those cool spots up here? <laughs> I can't believe it. I thought you had some juice. <laughs> I drank it all. <laughs> It'll be brought back indecisively by Adams. Nice move across the 20. And good field position for Louisiana Lafayette across the 30. You know, when you're running the football, you talk about cutting defenders in half, getting them on the ground. 
Watch what happens in here as Louisiana Lafayette tries to stunt. Linebacker comes in, cut to the ground. Down lineman, cut to the ground. Look at the lane. These guys are on the ground. Now you're sustaining blocks down the football field. Selvin Young finishes the run. Excellent play. But once you get players on the ground, it is a big time natural running lane and Selvin Young's eyes got big. Bat by design, moving the pocket and over is shooting. Jason Jerry. Dave, we talked about the inexperience on the left side of the offensive line. For Jarrett Babb, you've got a sophomore who's in his first season as a starter, Will Chance at left tackle. Tim Falters is a true freshman out of Jesuit High School in New Orleans, 6'4", 3'10". You're going up against massive defensive front four. Uh, it, it's incredible. I mean, Texas has got a rotation of down linemen. Roderick Wright is going to be a first-round draft pick. Larry Dibbles is a player. Frank Ocam is a player. They have three defensive tackles that arguably, when they're all done playing here, will be first or second round picks. Terrell Fenton and a true freshman at the tailback spot is he joins Dwight Linden. They flank back. Linden, the fullback, right, gets it. It's over, it's over, it's over. Very little it's yardage, over. maybe one yard and a half the most. Man, it was Roderick Wright underneath again, a second team all Big 12 performer. The last time Louisiana Lafayette came to Texas to play, they played against a couple of down linemen. That are number one, uh, number one and number two pick in the NFL. Casey Hampton with the Pittsburgh Steelers was number one pick. Sean Rogers, number two pick of the Detroit Lions. They're both made the Pro Bowl already in their careers. Louisiana Lafayette's probably saying, where did they get all these defensive tackles? Well, at least in that game, they had a 10 to nothing lead early. And this one too. Bab and a jump ball brought in a first down. The wide receiver on that side. Derek Smith timed it perfectly, a true freshman out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale. He read it and located it. Exactly, Joel. That's what happens on those deep balls. The quarterback is told on the deep ball to throw it short, if anything, into the outside shoulder, the back hip, the back shoulder, because the receiver can find the football and adjust to the football a lot more readily than the defensive back. And that's exactly what took place there. A little bit late was Aaron Ross. And now first down at the Texas 38 after the big game. And the dead ball foul coming up against the offense. So it'll cost Louisiana Lafayette. The last thing it could afford is a lot of markoffs. No doubt. Ball start, 62 on the offense. Five yards, first down. It's called on the center, Greg Hodges. So, John Bible, our referee from the Big 12. 134 miles west of New Orleans, you traveled to Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, the storm hit New Orleans, and it even moved east of New Orleans. So, Lafayette was spared of most of the moisture. They did get 50 to 60 mile an hour winds, so they had their regular practice schedule. But as we mentioned at the very top of the telecast, we talked to Ricky Bussey yesterday. So many of these kids are from New Orleans and have family there as well, right. even if they're not from New Orleans. And, and Coach Bustle, I mean, he talked about how there, there's parents all over campus in, in siblings. With the Quasimodo look, it's Terrell Fenroy. 5'10", 185, true freshman. Man, yesterday we did talk to the head coach of the Raging Cajuns about good And hopefully we'll find out a few more that the families are okay, but uh, a number of them have nothing at home. Bad in trouble, and throws it away. So it's going to bring up second and long, and let's head back to the studio. Kia's here. It is some kind of game, Mike. It, last year it was the same way, Joel. It was decided we had that game in a goal line stand. That is a, a great rivalry, an in-state rivalry, always, always competitive. It's going to be third and long, third and a little more than ten. The dump off. And some blocking ahead. Good roll down to the 30-yard line, but short of the first down is the running back, Terrell Fenroy. A little dump. Let's head down to Jim Knox. Jim's got a lot of Shreveport. Yeah, that's a blow. They're starting tailback. Now Kaminsky tries to get him on the board. It'll be a 47-yard attempt. Long enough, and it's good. They cut the deficit in half. Sean Kaminsky out of La Place, Louisiana, a senior who last year hit 14 of 22. Well, the square best is 50. He's just inside of that with a 47-yarder. Bebo looks stressed out, doesn't he? I'm telling you, that's <laughs> chilling right there now. All right, Toyota scoring drive. It, wasn't, it didn't take long, seven plays, three minutes off the clock, 39 yards, and that young man, Kamiski, with a 47-yard field goal. 
Will he get it deep into the end zone again? No, this time it's going to be Terrell Brown. And Brown, full team to the outside with a nice move. So he takes it up to the 35. Well, Dave, you talked about it a few minutes ago. These two teams got together five years ago. And the Longhorns, well, they were victimized early on a mistake. Chris Sims, he was picked off by Terrence Hunter. It went for a 43-yard touchdown return. Sims gone, Major Applewhite in. And the Major threw for 315 yards, four touchdown passes. Texas with 52 unanswered. And they won it, 52 to 10. I'll tell you, the old major was a great field general, wasn't he? He could get it done now. They didn't like him much here, did they? He had tremendous a, football IQ. Still does. He was a favorite. This crowd, this whole city, they had a love affair with Major Applewhite. In the eye. It's a 6-3 lead for Vince Young and the Longhorns. And how about Ramon Taylor's second touch of the game? And he's got it across the 40 on an end around the 42 for a gain of seven, tripped up by the inside linebacker, Mark Risher. You know, Lamont's Taylor is exactly like Ted Ginn Jr. with Ohio State. They talk about Ted Ginn, how he is, he touches the ball all different types of places, wide receiver, running back, uh, return guy in the kicking game. That's what Taylor is. Taylor and, and, and Ted Ginn Jr. next week, it's going to be an unbelievable matchup of speed and athleticism at multiple spots. Jamal Charles, a true freshman from Port Arthur, Texas. First career carry, and he ran up the back of the legs of his own blocker on that side. He went up Jonathan Scott's heels and fell down. Yeah, that was a little bit of adrenaline rush in there, not quite patient enough. Look at the helmets. They got the throwback helmets. See the, the numbers over the Longhorn logo right there on the helmet? That's honoring the 1963 national champions, the, yes, the first championship team here. For the Texas Longhorns. Darrell Royal, what a legend. You know, you're going to get a stadium named after you. That's pretty strong. Third down, Young on the option pitch. Charles, he's got some blocking. He's into the secondary, all the way to the 40 yard line for a first down. And Michael Adams gets to him finally. Texas has so many skilled people that can get from zero to 60 as fast as anybody. I mean, there's a bunch of Ferraris. Meseratis, they're out there in space, and boy, they can accelerate so fast. Meseratis? Yeah, I mean, it's the, all those all those sports cars. <laughs> I mean, they, they, can, they can shift gears. It's like they're out there in space against a bunch of 18-wheelers, the way they just take off. Did you take the Hooterville trolley in here? <laughs> <laughs> First down at the 40. We all get out of the gun. Nobody oh. covered. And what a drop by Lima Sweet. He had such a cushion. Nobody was even about seven, eight yards from him on the line. And that's a great side adjustment by Vince Young. It is. I mean, that's basically like uh, a pitch in the running game. Because if you catch the football, you get five yards. First thing you have to do is catch the football, though. And then worry about yards after catch, after the catch. Don't worry about yards after catch before you catch it. Keep your eyes off it. That's what happens. And look at how deep Torres Kingsby is. He's a good seven, eight yards off him. And then he finally gets into the picture as he drops it. Now they're rolling them up a little bit and backing them off. On a second and ten, Selvin Young cruising his way. I believe he's got a just inside the 30 for a first down. They make it look easy even inside the tackles, don't they? Had not. The redshirt freshman from Lufkin, Texas, made that stop. Well, I, I really believe that this Texas offensive line it is, is as good as anybody in the country as a group and with some individuals. And that big fella right there, Jonathan Scott, is as good as anybody in the country. Hey, that's just, that's a tough deal right there. You have Thomas and Jonathan Scott reach blocking on a, on a defensive end that's undersized at about 240 pounds. That's like a tidal wave coming down on him. Thomas was doing such a good job. Scott was just trying to get in the neighborhood. Weaving his way, another first down for Vince Young. Sometimes it just looks too easy. Boy, he has got the sweetest feet now. You know, 6'5", he's long, long arm, long legs, and he's got good-sized feet. But watch how he picks him up and puts him down. Look at the jackhammer feet on this long-legged, and now those are good-sized feet now. We're not talking about, you know, little pads. We're talking about some big hoofs. And he can jackhammer those feet in space about as well as anybody I've ever seen. Totally rare specimen physically, there's no question. It's not like you can teach that, Dave. No, that's a that's a gift from the big man himself. 
Now you're calling him big man. Bouncing outside, Charles finds the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Well, they got so much talent. This young man is, is another one that can scoop. He had the country's fastest high school time in the hurdles. Faster than anybody in the entire United States of America. And now he's playing running back for University of Texas. I mean, they have enough speed where they could enter a 4 by 100 relay team in the Olympics and medal. Richmond, you need this one, big boy. Pino's done it. That's David Pino. Another senior back up. That splits the uprights. As Richmond McGee has never kicked a field goal in an extra point in a game, that's his first on his second attempt. Seven play, 65 yard drive, two and a quarter off the clock, and a 14 yard touchdown run for Jamal Charles. Well, the first person Charles should go and thank is this guy, Thomas. Watch him sustain, sustain on the perimeter, stay after his block. Now, tight ends, they have to be a hybrid. Sometimes they're like wide receivers running routes, and then they have to hunker down like offensive tackles and block people. And David Thomas is well, the biggest there is in the country. Let's go back to the Texas High School Coaches Association All-Star Game. This is Jamal Charles. He turned out to be the MVP of the game with three touchdowns, 98 yards on the ground. It was played July 26 at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio and gave everybody an idea of what the Longhorns had that kind of depth and he may not be a starter this year he may always come in after Selvin Young but he's going to have as many carries yeah and he's not going to hurt you when he's in there he is a uh, Selvin Young can fly but Charles is at another level I mean he's almost changed a pace from Selvin Young because of his ability to accelerate and Selvin Young this guy averages almost nine yards a touch you know, in his career as well, they have so many guys that once they get out in space, cause all kinds of problems. How about 140 yards rushing already for Texas on 15 carries compared to one on five attempts for the Raging Cajuns? Not that we're shocked, right? but still the disparity well, deserves mention. That's the, uh, the offensive and defensive lines of Texas amongst the best in the country, if not the best. Jerry's back there with Adams. Man, it's going to be Jason Cherry from just at the goal line. Coverage. They excel in that as well. You better not be indecisive on where you're going to go with the ball against Texas this year. And there's a flag down at the end of the play. And I got a feeling there's going to be a personal foul coming up. Uh, the fullback for the Raging Cajuns because one of the Longhorns lost his helmet, uh, got in a tangle with Booker Jenkins. Right. And, and that's just uh, losing your poise. You know, one thing uh, that, that the coaching staff... Of After the play was over, personal foul number 44 on the return team. It'll be half the distance to the goal, first down. And, and Coach Bustle, he talked about, you know, you should respect Texas, but don't be in. This is another area that Louisiana Lafayette wanted to compete is field position. And so far, they're getting hammered in the field position battle in this game. And now the Longhorns with a 10-point lead at 13-3. to Bad from his own end zone, barely eluded a safety. Yeah, it's and a, it's going to be a grounding call, yeah. and it may end up being a safety. Yeah, it is. unless he get out of the end zone, you cannot throw the ball away to avoid a sack in the end zone. If you do, that's a penalty, and that's a safety. He penalty. wants to talk it over the umpire now. Penalty in the end zone is a safety. Now, he, did he place him at about the half-yard line? That's what he did. I don't think he got his foot out of the end zone. Maybe he did. Talk to the linesman about it. Yeah, he wants to get everybody's opinion. Was he out of the end zone before he launched that football? There's no flag for intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the vicinity. In the vicinity is the key. Was he in the right area code or zip code? <laughs> Coach Bustle likes it. There was a receiver on 6th Street. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if anybody knows where his receivers are, it's bad. And there is, there is a receiver somewhere. There he is. 24 here. Yes. On the sideline, but just thrown nowhere near him. And Bab was definitely under duress. There was a receiver at the concession stand. And now, was there movement up front, or is it going to be on the Longhorns? That was Tim Crowder who thought he had a safety. Babb did a good, good job to just elude that kind of pressure that early in the set. Before the snap, offside 90, number 92 on the defense. Contact was made, five yards, second down. They're really deep up there. Larry Dibbles starts this season backing up Old Cam, but... Hey, he was second team all Big 12 last year. Well, here's Dibbles and Bits right here, and he gets a bit of the center. 
And, you know, that, that's movement before the, the ball moves. You can't do that. <laughs> Bam. What hit me? Yeah, you're, you're, you're right on top of the ball. Don't start lurching forward until the ball moves. It'll be a timeout. I think that's a good decision, Jerry. It's going to be second down and five at the nine. Well, it's been on our mind ever since it hit. And these last few days, we've seen the devastating effects of Hurricane Kadat. Salvation Army, USA.org. Or you can call 800 SAL Army. You can also go to www.redcross.org. Or you can call 800 Help Now. If you experience delays, please be patient because so many people are trying to contact these organizations. As an example of how beneficial these donations can be, well, the Salvation Army says a $100 donation to the Salvation Army to 100 alone will feed a family of four for two days, provide two cases of drinking water, and one household cleanup kit containing brooms, mops, buckets, and cleaning supplies. So our hearts go out to everyone there. And if you can, please help in the support. If everybody does a little, nobody has to do a lot. And a lot of people are helped. I mean, you know, $100, you just heard what that can do for, for people in, in desperate and dire need. I cannot imagine the mindset that people are going through down there with the devastation. I mean, your everything, your home, your possessions, I mean, it's gone. You have nothing left. All you have is your, your family, which is what you have to have most, but and everything else can be replaced, but it, right now it's all gone. We cannot even understand the devastation those peer, uh, people are experiencing right now. It's not translated, I promise you, uh, on television. We've talked to so many of the people that have left the area, and it is beyond tragic. In the eye from the nine, great penetration again. Flag on the play. Crowd, crowd noise has got Luis in the Lafayette a little bit jumpy, Joel. Before the snap, ball start, 87 white. Five yards, second down. Now the young man in the backfield, Terrell Fenroy, the true freshman, told us about his experience and how it impacted his family. A house, I could be helping my dad find my mom. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, I'm just thankful that I have my family, we have each other, and with each other, we're gonna we're gonna get through this. I know we're gonna get through this. Now well, Fenroy lost it. Bab fortunately found it in the end zone, and that was chased out of bounds by Bobino, a redshirt freshman out of Lamarck. I think that says it all. He, he's a kid with perspective that's only 18 years old, and his family. And we've heard it from so many around this program. His family is living with him now. Well, it it, it is unbelievable, and football becomes so trivial. I mean, in, in the big picture of life, and basically the tsunami that hit hit the uh, Louisiana and Mississippi area, football becomes a tough thing to focus on. It's an escape more than anything else. Without a doubt, that is what it is. It's a diversion. Man, they take care of Fenroy again. Coming up, Aaron Harris on the play. The middle linebacker, second team all Big 12 or last year. You know who he reminds me of, Joel Dexter Copley. When I watch Harris run around out there, I see the former Dallas Cowboy and uh, Dexter Copley. That same type of body and same type of uh, explosiveness, quickness, good player. Aaron Ross. Aaron Ross waits for the punt from oh, Britt Framel. Let him go, let him go, let him go. And a good one. Russell backpedal to the 41, picking up a block over to the left side, then runs into his own man. He'll only take it to the 44-yard line. It's a good coverage by Louisiana Lafayette, but still a good field position for the Texas Longhorns. 53 yards on that punt. Well, for the Longhorns, there's been so much talk about Vince Young, cover of Sports Illustrated, the game breaker, the guy that could win the Heisman, lead him to a national championship. They could go to the Rose Bowl for a second consecutive season. And then on the opposite end, preview for the NFL, former Ragin' Cajun, Jake DeLome of Carolina. And they're on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of the type of quarterbacks that they are. But it just shows you there's more than one way to skin a cat at that position. And both of them are highly successful in their own right. Only Charles in the backfield with Young this time. And one of the few times a straight drop for Vince Young. Nice grab by Nate Jones, the sophomore from Texarkana. This is a guy that Vince Young started working with the wide receivers a week after the Rose Bowl win. 
And Nate Jones back in Texarkana, about a six-hour drive, he wanted to make sure he didn't let down his quarterback, and he drove the six hours while he was on break. You know, watching Vince Young throw the ball, Joe, and we'll watch it a little bit more during the course of the day here. I mean, people have been very critical of his throwing motion. He does drop down between three-quarters and sidearm a lot, and people have a problem with it. Charles bouncing outside for the first down. And just kicked by Michael Adams. Otherwise, he's gone again. He's got it at the 42-yard line. They do have so many home run threats now. It's well, amazing how many guys it can take at the distance. They can put so much speed on the field. When you put Charles on the field and Taylor and you have Vince Young on the field, that is a triangle of speed that is hard to match in college football. I mean, who do you defend? You can't double all of them. There's not enough guys to defend everything else. Speed kills. And Texas has got plenty of it. But you know what? My, my thing on Vince Young getting back to his throwing motion, he's completing 59% of his passes first two seasons, best ever at Texas. That's what counts. Young on first and ten has all day. Ramon Taylor, how would you like to have him in the open field? And Michael Adams, you can't say enough about what this guy has done. The junior from Dallas in the secondary. He started all 11 last year. You, that's beyond being on an island. Yeah, Michael Adams can run. He's blocked uh, three field goals in his career and taken and, and two of those that he's blocked have been returned for touchdown. Michael Adams is a player. Michael Adams is, a, is, is five foot eight. He is uh, one of those cases where it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. Michael Adams will be fighting you all day long. It's like me trying to get a French fry from you after the game. As long as there's no ketchup. <laughs> Young on the rollout. Cushion on that side. As he goes outside. On the grab. It is. Well his other option. Quan Cosby. 22 year old that played minor league baseball. He's a true freshman from Mark Texas. You're going to see a lot of Longhorns on the field. And if you get to a point now where Texas is starting to run so many more snaps from scrimmage than Louisiana Lafayette, how can they hang in there? I mean, Texas is deeper. They've got high school All-Americans backing up positions in, on this football team. Can Louisiana Lafayette hang in there? I know they conditioned well in the heat, but it's tough. Vince Young giving it off. How about Vince Young? First quarter alone, and that'll be the final snap of the first quarter. 87 yards of total offense, 56 for the air, 31 on the ground. And for Louisiana Lafayette in muggy conditions, and they're used to it, obviously, from Louisiana. This first quarter felt like two hours. No question. And the thing about Vince Young's numbers, Joel, they're so effortless. I mean, it looks like he's not even busted himself to do it. He's well within himself. He never plays out of control. He's always well within himself and still makes incredible plays because of that God-gifted athletic ability. So the burnt orange prominent this afternoon and doing quite well in the early going. The number two team in the preseason polls in the nation. At the end of the first quarter with a 10-point lead. Long on 13-3. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sera on FSN. One of the great atmospheres you will find anywhere in college football. And we are fortunate this afternoon to be in wow. Austin, Texas. Parrot Tops here. I'd like his problem. 13 to 3 at the end of the first quarter. There is electricity in Austin, Texas. That's a head of hair. I wish I could grow hair like that. I'm jealous as heck. I'd like just an inch of that hair. Man. Well, the Texas Longhorns with 209 yards of total offense on 25 snaps. Compared to 39 for Louisiana Lafayette on 12 offensive plays. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Jim Knox back in Austin, the state capital. What a night. A warm and muggy one. We're hoping for some breeze eventually. Ramonts, and they call him RT around here. Not Taylor, not Ramonts. Ramonts Taylor, RT, the sophomore from Temple, Texas. He'll learn to put that ball in the right hand when he's running right. He's got it down to the 10. Like I said before, you, you, look, you look for a triangle of offense. And the triangle of offense they have when RT's in the game, Charles is in the game, and Young is in the game is unbelievably fast and athletic. And he just puts so much pressure on you. They can come at you from so many angles with so much speed. Chandler trying to adjust. Right, guys, they had penetration actually in the backfield that time. 
and getting in early. It was a good job. Delestine made the stop. Joe Bradley, though, busted up the play along with Wes Simone. So a short gain of a yard down to the nine. Coxie, what's the latest? Right, after 102 out, yards in the opener against North Jordan, Texas. Brought back a kick against Arkansas, and it was the injured ankle that required surgery. Knocked out his entire season. So concern on the sideline for the Longhorns, despite being up by 10. At game time, humidity uh, right around 90%. Selvin Young, last run, it looked like he took a helmet right on the lower side, the left side. And that's a bad ankle for him to begin with. And he said, come get me. And, and they're retaping it. They're getting that uh, tape job redone, tightening it up. And he was looking forward to the contact. You know, he, all the last year he didn't play, didn't play in the spring, and was looking for, uh, looking for somebody to hit him and he took a, sh a shot there. I mean, he's had his pads anchored. He had a nice touchdown run, but he got hit right on that ankle that's been bothersome to him and making the adjustment. Charles and Hall splitting off set behind Young. It's third and five from the 10 after the timeout. Young's got plenty of time. Oh. Wide open man in the middle. Touchdown. Nate Jones. Vince Young showing poise and patience there, letting it unfold and develop. And it all starts with protection from the offensive line. Vince Young could have read the classified ads, had a cup of coffee, and waved to the crowd before he threw the football. Nobody was near him. You give uh, Vince Young and the, his skill players that much time, they're going to pick you apart. Eighth place, 56 yards. Richmond McGee for the point after to put the Longhorns up by 17, and he is now one for three, a low two iron, and it was blocked. Boy, they love love them a long time around here, don't they? Well, I'll tell you that you know that's that's something that you're going to be concerned about, though. Got to get that kicking game going because that's going to be critical in some games. Richmond McGee will kick it away for the Longhorns. One thing you don't want to do is leave points on the field, and right now Richmond McGee has left two points on the field. Wide right and low trajectory block, two extra points. Not on the scoreboard, they're left on the field. Jarrell Carter is going to be back deep this time, along with Jason Cherry. That's what McGee does best. The touchback. Well, He's had 40% of his career kicks, touchbacks for a Kiyosera game break. That's a nice trip, isn't it? That's, that's a good recruiting tool right there. While you're here in your four years, we're going to go to Hawaii and play. That sounds good. And we'll take a week in Maui if you win. <laughs> we'll go straight from Oahu to Maui. <laughs> Bab out of the gun. And weaving his way with his first carry of the game out of the backfield for Raging Cajuns. It's Caleb Rubin. Yeah, the USC Trojans are the defending national champions. And we just heard from Mike Goldberg that they're cruising along early. It is early, though, at 14 to 3. And we're watching the number two team in the nation, at least in the preseason poll, the Texas Longhorns in Oklahoma. Dave, yep. hard TCU to believe. Got him. TCU got them today. But it's not hard to believe with the inexperience they have at quarterback. That's true. They, they struggled at quarterback in the offensive line today. Low snap of the flag down on the play. And Fab finds his. Wide receiver Derek Smith for the second time. Eric Hall's on his back immediately. But there is a flag. I think Texas got in that neutral zone. I think they're going to be called for offside. It'll be enough for the first down if it stands. Yes. Penalty is declined. First down. Call. So the Raging Cajuns down by 16, 19 to 3. Move the chains. That is their second first down of the game. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, didn't want to have happen. You don't want these guys jumping before the ball moves. And that's what Coach Chizik doesn't want any pre-snap penalties. You don't want offensive linemen jumping, defensive linemen jumping, formations being lined up improperly for penalty. You don't want that. Quick one underneath Smith again. True freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. She had a little bit of a cushion on that side, pulled it off in front of Terrell Brown, a starter last year, and they utilized it. Well, the Raging Cajuns are running a lot of short routes. The reason they have to do that is the pressure's so intense and the coverage is so good. You don't have time to throw the football, and you can't really get great separation. 
that's a good play on first down. You know, take that five or six yard gain and stay on schedule. And it's a good adjustment too. Read and take what they'll give you. Yep. Caleb Rubin. Shut down up. after he got a quick three. So he's hit by Aaron Harris first, the middle linebacker. Second team All Big 12 last year. They've only lost two on the defensive side. Two good ones, though. And Giger out of the safety position and the Buckets Award winner, Derek Johnson. And uh, this new defensive coordinator for Texas, Coach Chizik. Instantaneous credibility with the Longhorns, and I'll give you a few reasons why after this play. They spread the defense, need a little more than a yard. Fab, and behind Smith, who really did a good job. It was behind on the turn in. Aaron Harris caught up with him, but Derek Smith, a factor now. Aaron Harris took it, rolled the dice, tried to make the interception, and didn't come up with the football. So the guy ran a 4 3 8 40, so he can get down there. As a result of that, Aaron Harris rolled the dice and didn't come up with the play. Major Cajuns make the play on the ball. Whoop. First down. Texas territory for the first time for the Raging Cajuns. Bab in trouble. Good adjustment and under throws his wide receiver on that side. He was trying to get him downfield to Corey Frederick. Back to Coach Chizik in this uh, Texas defensive football team. They've now had three different defensive coordinators in three years. And the reason that they really like Coach Chizik, Auburn won all their games last year. And here's the coverage on this particular play. It's decent. They won all their games. They led the nation in points allowed. And he was the uh, coaching assistant of the year, the Frank Royals Award winner. That'll get you some credibility. Second and ten. No tight end in the formation. Four wides with trips over to the wide side of the field. Bab. And well timed. Punched out on that side by Aaron Ross. Bab now, 50% of his passes, 5 of 10. He hit 49% last year. Texas uh, is strong in the defensive line and strong in the secondary. Some of the best groups in college football at both places. And Bab gets uh, lit up by a little bit of a blitz right there. Coming after it. And down the football field, make a play on the ball. So the quarterback gets hit as he's releasing it by a linebacker blitz from Harris. Then the receiver pays the price on the other end. And Aaron Ross got away with that arm wrapped around the back of the wide receiver. So now third and ten. Pocket collapsing. There goes the ball. And fortunately for Bab, it's covered by the Raging Cajuns. Good pressure coming up. A Rapco. The Richard freshman out of Lamar High School in Houston. A Rapco, Poe rather. He got in there early. A Rapco has got extreme quickness off the edge. Watch him come up the football field, off the edge. Little bull rush and takes it inside. You know, you have to have hands and feet. And Arakpo showed the hand separating from the block and then the feet to close on the quarterback. Any athletic endeavor requires good feet and good hands to perform it, no matter what you're doing. Brett Framel punting once again to Aaron Harris, or Aaron Ross, rather, back at the 10. Low line drive. And he stays away from it. It'll roll for the Raging Cajuns inside the Longhorns, 10 down to the 9. So. Texas is going to have it with her worst starting position so far in the contest. Fifth series for the Longhorn. Send some of those trade wins from Oahu here to Austin. That'd be sweet. I mean, I like Lake Travis, Colorado River, dumping right into it, but. <laughs> so a 19 to three lead early for the Longhorns. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter. What kind of sophomore slump is it going to be for Adrian Peterson? He did not have a lot of success today. Well, my man Herschel Walker didn't slump. He did all right. But, you know, a lot of these guys, it's due to injury. And you lose some offensive linemen and you lose your quarterback, all of a sudden people are going to put eight in the box. And you're only as good as the surrounding components, the team around you. Yeah, they blitz off the edge the other way. Young dumped after a gain of only a yard, but there's a flag down on the play. Michael Adams, the blitzer, was in the neutral zone. Right. He left early. Yeah, he started blitzing. Uh, tried to flatten it out, but it was too late. He'd already penetrated the neutral zone. 
Offside number two defense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. A guy like that can usually hide at 5'8, but he was right in front of the linesman. Exactly. He's on the on the edge, totally exposed. Mac Brown wanted his team to take a, a workmanlike approach to this football game. Keep the eye on the prize. Don't think about Ohio State next week. Ohio State uh, handled Miami of Ohio, the Red Hawks today, up in Columbus. And he wants to do the same thing with Louisiana Lafayette. It's a deep set, Salvin Young, and looks like a checkoff for Vinshaw. It'll be a give for Selvin Young, bending it outside. He's got some room. Into the secondary for first down across the 25 to the 26. You've got to believe that what happened to Oklahoma earlier today played into the hands of what Matt Brown wanted to do in talking to his team in the locker room. Well, that's true, Joel. And look at Selvin Young. He's got the spat going on the left ankle. They taped his ankle, then taped over the shoe. He's got the spat action going. And I'll tell you what, this kid's decisive. I mean, he does not hesitate. He makes his mind up and he turns it up the football field. Now he's got the double tape job. It's like a cast on that left ankle. I mean, he's, he's, he doesn't have much flexibility and range of motion in that bad boy. Marching Band may have something to say about him using <laughs> spats. Nine yards of carry ain't bad. Vince Young all day again. Oh, wow. Deep downfield, Brian Carter. Inside the 35, all the way to the 34. And once again, it all starts with operating well up front with the offensive line and giving Vince Young an opportunity to throw the football. And once he starts to run, it scares you as a linebacker. Now you start to close toward him. Once Vince Young starts to approach the line of scrimmage, watch everybody start to close on him, and now you're down the football field. I mean, he is such a dual threat. He creates passing opportunities with his ability to, to make people miss and run in space. I mean, he's a weapon. It's a 40-yard catch to Carter. Selvin Young, he had a nice lane, shut down, and did he lose it at the end of the play? I believe so. Uh, will they say his knee was already down to the 30? You know, even if he uh, was down, you don't like that trend. Yeah, right, you he's already put it on the ground and they lost it once. Right, you don't like the uh, lack of ball security. That was one thing Mac Brown was concerned about. Cedric Benson did hold on to the football as well as be the number six all-time rusher with over 5,400 yards and number three all-time touchdown scorer. He had a workhorse. He had a guy that you just jab, you jab, you jab, you with Cedric Benson just pounded between those tackles and anchor you. And his concern was, will my young running backs demonstrate ball security? Selvin Young's had some problems in that area today. Got to believe that Mac Brown talked about Oklahoma not expecting TCU to be much of an opponent earlier today. And at least, not the staff, I'm talking about the players. Sure, sure. And they came back and it got them. And TCU can play. That's an improved team, and we knew that going in. Was a Double pitch. reverse. Ramon's Tanner all the way to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. you next week up in Columbus Taylor and Teddy Yin Jr. Now are they going to go for two or try the placement? They'll go for the regular placement. And is it going to be Richmond McGee once again? Yes. Early in the season they're going to need this young man, the senior from Garland, Texas. He's already missed two and make it three. That time there was great penetration and it was blocked by Michael Adams. So he is now one for four on extra point tries. And now he's now he's frustrated. His timing was terrible there, Joel. He was late. Between yeah, between the ball being the holder catching it and placing it, it took a while before McGee got there. But you do have to be more secure in your right there off the edge. Too much penetration and made made the edge too short. And Adams can fly. Watch who's the lead blocker. There's the pitch on the reverse. Vince Young. He's down the football field looking for somebody to block. RT did. We continue from Austin, Texas. Seven minutes, 38 seconds left in the half. It could easily be 28 to three, but it's been anything but easy for Richmond McGee as the first year place kicker, at least on extra points and field goal attempts. He always gets into the end zone. It'll leave a touchback once again. That's been his strength. You go back to last season, though, a four year starter, a former walk on, Dusty Mangan. 
where would they have been without this young man to end the game against the Michigan Wolverines? The game winner, 38-37, Texas. So Vince Young got him into that position. Mangum finished it off. It was a great success story because he was a walk-on here for the Longhorns. And Richmond McGee, well, he's paid his dues. He's waited. He's been patient. But now can the young man capitalize? And, and now his head's spinning. Now I mean, he's trying to figure which way is up right now. A bunch of things have happened to him out there. First one right, a couple of blocks. Well, Babb is going to get a break. Michael DeSormo, redshirt freshman out of New Iberia, Louisiana. Tremendous athlete. Working out of the gun on the pitch. Caleb Rubin's got a first down across the 30, and we'll check in. He is uh, the quarterback and the receivers might like it, but what about all those people in Baton Rouge? Yeah, I'll tell you, Alex, They have a good time anyway. Alex Smith liked it, and you got to figure the league's as good an athlete as Alex Smith. So they like what they see early at LSU against Wyoming. Rubin dropped in a hurry by Brian Robinson. Junior from Splendor, Texas. Honorable mention all Big 12 last year. I think he was quick off the ball a little bit, Dave. Yeah, he, he got a jump. I mean, you better uh, you better change the snap count up a little bit. Because that's your only, basically it's your only advantage is the snap count. And that's just getting inside of the big old tackle who uh, never got out of the stand. Brandon Cox. He was frozen. He tried to get a license plate number. Couldn't pick that up. It was blow by. Make it one way, go the other way. Intercepted on the deflection. Aaron Ross gets the interception. Off the hands of the running back. Ross gets the break from Booker Jenkins. I think Louisiana Lafayette had linemen downfield and eligible linemen anyway, but it doesn't matter. There's the takeaway. The thing that Louisiana Lafayette wanted to avoid, don't give the football away. This is just a, a an, an athletic a, athletic adjustment to the football. You know what? You got to catch that ball. That that ball. It wasn't the greatest pass in the world, but Booker Jenkins has got to squeeze it. You just can't let that thing uh, split your hands like that. But Aaron Ross certainly took advantage of it. Looks like the tip drill, didn't it? Sure did. They practice that every single day with the defense backs. From the 20 yard line, Young got rid of it. Oh. Just in and it touchdown. David Thomas. David Thomas's 10 touchdowns prior to that one had averaged 24 yards. That one's just over 20, so it won't hurt his average all that much. David Thomas is a big play guy, and I think he's going to be huge for Vince Young during the course of the year. If linebackers start to key on Vince Young, Little play action. You don't have to play action in this one. Straight drop back, but play action and throw to your tight end. And, and Thomas does a great job of finding a hole in the zone and settled right in there. Yeah, well, Richmond McGee is right now saying that's the last thing I needed. He's one for four on attempts. On extra point. <laughs> that earned the Bronx two down here. That's right. <laughs> Feel for the kid, don't you? You do it. You know what, it's it's tough because Louisiana Lafayette under Coach Bustle, they blocked 16 kicks coming into today's game. They blocked some extra points here today. And that's over the last three seasons that's alone. That's over the last three seasons alone. So they, they've got their hands on more than one today. That's what they wanted to do is compete in special teams, compete in field position, and not turn the ball over and take it away. That was their keys to success today, and they've had mixed results to say the least. So we still have 6.20 left in the half, and it's already. And I'll tell you, the Buffaloes are going to be on a high, a Rocky Mountain high coming off of that yes. field goal at the end, a 48-yard field goal to, to win the game against their arch rival, Colorado State. Joel Platt back, the senior quarterback. It's the year of the quarterback in the Big 12. It is. Joel Platt, Reggie, the real Dylan McNeil. We're watching Vince Young. There's yep. a number of Brad Smith Brad of Missouri Smith. for his senior season. Absolutely, it is. I mean, the Big 12 is stacked at the quarterback position. And it'll be interesting to see how Oklahoma bounces after the tough loss today. McGee kicks it away, and Michael Adams, after bobbling it, will keep it right there in the end zone. Let's head back down to the sideline. The, the golf shirt, he's that a, look. I mean, is he a cool the guy, customer? The guy's a magnet. There's no question about it. DeSormo stays in there at quarterback. Coach Buss is looking for some hustle right now. 
I want you to win on that one. That's an impossible. <laughs> Running back on the carry is Terrell Fenroy. The true freshman from New Orleans dropped after a gain of a yard by Robertson. First down line, all brought to you by Overstock.com, your online outlet. It's all about the O, Overstock.com. You know, Robison is the Big 12 champion in the shot put. Robison is a powerful, explosive athlete. Is it 21 feet? 21 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Try two and a half times that. <laughs> Breaking tackles across hey, the 25 to the 28. Benroy once again, not a bad idea. Try to get something going on the ground. Benroy Roy is reminding me of Okoye right now with that big neck roll, neck roll. Watch the defensive lineman right here coming off the ball and controlling the line of scrimmage. I mean, nothing fancy. It's just beat your man up front. Robinson separates from a block. It's just tough to control those big athletes the way they can use their hands and separate from blocks. So third and a little less than three. Third and three. Benroy in the backfield. Stays there with DeSormo out of the gun. Good touch and a first down. Taking it in for his second catch of the game. It's Corey Frederick. Killer Brute gets to him. DeSormo, they were thinking about playing him in another position to get him on the field other than quarterback because of his athletic ability. They decided not to go that route and allow him just to develop at the quarterback position. He's got a future. Final five minutes of the first half. Sormo leading his high school team to three straight district titles in New Iberia, Louisiana. Just shy of the 36. And DeSormo showing some of his athleticism and breaking a tackle for plus yardage. He's not got a bounce. Where will they put it? Just shy of the 38. It's Arakpo on that hit. That's that's a Arak, Arakpo is just to be able to do break down and, and make a play in space against a guy with the footwork like a quarterback who can run. I mean, that's just incredible athletic ability. They have so many guys that can play at such a high level physically. Bus or check that DeSormo going low. Man, it's complete. Went to Ray Gibbons for his first catch of the game. The guy from the Lone Star State out of Lufkin, a sophomore. Played last year as a true freshman. That's his first draft. So they're trying to get some rhythm going with a sugar no huddle. And, and Texas is rolling in a lot of defensive linemen now. Roy Miller, others in there giving people a break. And the solo on his way down. Couldn't get away from Robert Killebrew, the sophomore from Spring, Texas. Coach Chizik starting to play a lot of players, and I think uh, Coach Davis will do the same thing. Mac Brown said he wants to establish depth in his roster. He wants to be at least two deep everywhere, and uh, and they're going to start start getting after it in that regard. And it keeps people fresh, and it prevents injury by keeping people fresh. And Killebrew takes the quarterback down with a big sack off the blitz. Another punt coming. Ross waits for it. The wobbler takes a longhorn bounce. Man, finally they grab it around the 40-yard line. So that's where Texas is going to have it. How much longer is it? Five. He's taller than 25 of the 32 quarterbacks in the NFL, and he at least looks eye to eye with all the others. He stands like a power forward in that pocket looking over the rush. He's got 126 yards passing. He's got four carries for 31 yards on the ground. He's also got great field position once again at the 40, first and 10. All day to throw the ball. On the comeback, Ryan Carter, a first down to the 46. And you described it perfectly. When you run a comeback route 14 yards down the field at the comeback point, it starts with the protection up front. And you have to give your quarterback ample opportunity. Watch the, watch the pocket that's formed for Young. And then down the football field, the old comeback route. You have to respect the speed. And, and that, that was excellent. Plant the foot hard, come back to the football. Nice route run by Carter. Left the defensive back with his feet crossed. And plant that arm in a stiff arm position <laughs> in the back of the defensive back. 
to help you stop. Vince Young will lose yardage for the first time tonight. Running out of bounds after a loss of about two and a half, three yards. Now the numbers, Vince Young. Last year, the last six games were phenomenal in the overall comparisons between his first year when Chance Box started the season as the starting quarterback, then he took over, and then it was his team last year. Yeah, and, and it all, a lot of those numbers came in those final six games. And how much of a carryover will there be? Those numbers are pretty impressive, and I think they're going to get better. You know, because he's he's a swagger about him now, a good swagger. He's built some confidence after that Rose Bowl, and why not? He was the star player of one of the best games in college football history. It was a classic, wasn't it? Sure was. Now the quarterback draw, weaving his way to a first down. And Young takes it all the way to the 30. There's a gain of better than 20, almost 23 on the run. And let's head to a kiss here. All right, Mike, that's tough. Two good guys. You don't want either one to lose their debut right. in their first job, our first game on the job. I think Charlie's going to do a heck of a job at Notre Dame, though. I really do. Out of the gun. First in 10, Texas from the Louisiana Lafayette 30. Underneath, Romance Taylor. And dives for an extra yard at you. Close to the 21. The play, the play before that pass, Joel, when Vince Young went for over 20 yards, he showed his power at 6'5", 235. He's bigger than all the defenders on, on the Raging Cajuns other than the defensive ends. Romance Taylor, they're going to play him in a bunch of different places, RT. Going to play him at wide receiver on the end around. We're going to throw him the football from that spot. He's going to play running back and run the ball from there. He is a big time weapon, and they're going to. It's going to be where's Waldo? No, where's RT? That was only his second carry of the game. Jamal Charles. What is he in a hole in a hurry? And he won't go down. God, did he get his pads low? <laughs> he takes it to the 15-yard line. Kingsby. And while we were away, Dave, we were talking about the differences between Selvin Young and this young man. That time he looked more young. Right. Then Charles, before he was slasher dasher, that time he got low. Well, I, I think Selvin Young is going to be the guy between the tackles, and, and Charles did a good job of it here between the tackles. But Charles is one that can bounce it to the outside and really hurt you on the perimeter. He has got that that speed to get to the edge and really get it done. Another first down for the Longhorns, already leading 32 to three, approaching a minute to play in the half. Hot potato, for Vince Young. Too much time again. And well, he's human. I think they're going to call a hold, though, on Texas. That's why he had a lot of time. That's going to set him back a little bit. Overshot Billy Pittman, wide receiver out of Cameron, Texas. The hold's going to be on big tackle Tony Hills. It's going to take, take him back. But how would you like to be Louisiana Lafayette? You look at Vince Young. He's 6'5", 235. He's bigger than anybody. Holding 79 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. He's bigger than everybody on your defensive football team except for the defensive tackles, and he's faster than the fastest guy you have in your defense. How do you defend that guy? And at the top of the screen, you'll see the, the grab right here. Or, excuse me, on the bottom of the screen, the grab right here and the takedown. Now, that's, you get your money's worth. I mean, you get the old body slam, and you know what? If you're going to hold, finish him. Take him to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Pancake the guy. Yeah, get your, get, get, you know, don't just patty cake him, finish him. Get your money somewhere. Not flag. Not flag football around here. From the 25. On first down the screen, first one we've seen. Charles, not a bad kick out block. Down to the 10. How about that lead block? That was Cedric Dockery, a redshirt freshman from Garland, Texas. You couldn't see the number of the Ragin' Cajun. He obliterated him. He, he eclipsed him. There's no question. And you talk about finishing the block. Timeout, Texas. Man. It's called uh, the, the block was the key, and it was the eraser. This is the gentleman that gets the block. Watch him Watch him get out in front. Hopefully, we'll be able to see some of his block. There's the start of it coming up. And there he just takes him to the sideline and plants him out of bounds. <laughs> and when you give Charles that kind of room, Sir Charles says, see ya. Man, when you when you erase a guy from a front seven, you've done a pretty good job. Coaching staff is going to and when they show that in film, he'll get a, he'll get the uh, round of applause. Oh, there's, there's no doubt. And, and and you know what? To finish plays like that is just effort. And uh, Mac Brown's going to be happy with the effort that his team's putting forth out there. And he's playing a lot of backups now. He's playing a lot of uh, substitute linemen. He said he was going to do that. Hard to believe it's already been eight years for Mac, isn't it? Yeah, he's done a job. Now. Uh, this program is on a serious roll. It's uh, it's the best it's been in over 30 years since Daryl Royal. You know. 
Cardinal took them to the to the pinnacle more than once. I wonder if they can get to the pinnacle this year. Yeah, they've got such a complement of running backs and the balance they have in the backfield. Selvin Young started it all off. We've seen Young. This is Jamal Charles who's got a score. Yep. Young lowered his pads and then Charles just bounced to the outside. And then you bring in RT either as a running back or bring him the football reversing as a receiver. And I'm telling you one of the great matchups next week individually is going to be Teddy Ginn Jr. against RT. Who's going to make who's going to have the most touches and make the most yards and score the most points. Little misdirection. Touchdown. Uncovered. Game of, game of Touchdown, Texas. Joel, that's what happens when you start dominating the line of scrimmage in the running game. Little play action, hard play action fake. Tight end all by his lonesome because linebackers are worried about that running game. This when uh, Vince Young comes to the sideline saying, that was kind of easy. Now, when we looked at the matchup, and I'm only talking on paper a few days ago, and we, we talked to the coaches and both staffs, there was a huge disparity in size in the trenches. And sure. that's what you had to worry about more than anything else for Louisiana Lafayette. Well, absolutely. And, and their coaching staff was worried about the size uh, disparity at the Texas wide receiver spot in their secondary. I mean, they're bigger, faster, quicker, stronger. They have more body. McGee, he's in the groove. 39 to 3, Longhorn. Vince Young sells it pretty well, doesn't he, on this score? He, he really does, and, and that's going to that's going to stand him in good stead during the course of the season. Get that running game going. Look, you fake the block, and then you leak out late, and and Thomas does a great job. He slow blocks, blocks like he's going to be involved in that running game on that play action fake, and then he just kind of releases and just totally unnoticed. Once he started that blocking action, they dropped him in coverage. Mike Goldberg, Billy Ray, on the Big 12 now. There were. They put up on the big screen here. Three kids came and they had blue and white on, and it spelled out TCU. And this crowd, 82,000 strong, if you heard it erupt, it was not for anything on the field, but for just those simple three letters, TCU. Boy, that's a that's the biggest win in TCU school history to go to Norman, Oklahoma, and upset the number five ranked in one poll, number seven ranked in another poll, Oklahoma Sooners. Wow. Last time the Sooners lost a home opener. TCU. Mountain West Conference, 1996. Yep. Here we go. Michael Adams, five yards into the end zone. Blocking broke down, and he's out to the 219 yard line. Longhorns had a good little Michael Adams at wide receiver. Remember him? Yes. And uh, he, I know he had had an opportunity in, with the Pittsburgh Steelers for a little bit. I remember him seeing seeing him with the Steelers some. He made some plays for the Longhorns at the skill spot as well. Nice basketball player out of Boston College too. In the NBA. <laughs> There's a few Michael Adams out there. 32 seconds on the clock. And three timeouts on the board for Louisiana Lafayette. As Jerry Babb is back in the game now. Desormo got the last two series. I do like the way Ricky Bustle got the red first redshirt freshman in there, though. Caleb Rubin spun around and down, lassoed by Michael Griffin after a game of about four near the 23. Uh, good idea in a game like this, get him experience. And Ricky Bustle told us on the phone earlier this week, he said, listen, a third of my team hasn't even, they've never been on a plane to make a trip like this. He goes from the locker room to the sideline. I hope a bunch of them don't drop like yeah. stage fright. No, there's no, there's no doubt. And I thought they responded early on. You know, in the early stages of this game, they, they forced the fumble, right. caused the turnover. They did some things, but Texas has just got too many players. I mean, Louisiana Lafayette can bring their A-plus game and still not come out with a victory. That's yeah, for sure. Too much depth. It was 13-3 at the end of the first quarter, and then Texas just started to wear them down and capitalize on a couple of mistakes and one of those mistakes a turnover a pick off a deflection and they get a quick touchdown off of that let's head downstairs to Jim Knox Knox okay Steve. thank you Joe Mack you got to be extremely pleased dominating on both sides of football and Vincent Young 13 out of 15 three touchdowns right now Jim we are pleased there's a couple of glitches in the kicking game that we got to get worked out we had a, a young man that wasn't stepping inside like he should have on the extra point but we got that worked out we think we, we changed it <laughs> for one thing uh, we've got to do a little better job covering kickoffs but I think we got 
thought that worked out. Our kickoff return was good. I'd like to see a punt return so we could do a better job there. But overall, I feel like our guys are playing really hard. What we've got to do is make sure we continue to play the second half. You can't play 30 minutes of football. you got to play 60. All right, thanks for the time, Mac. Joel? All right, Noxie, thanks. And ready for the second 30s, you could tell. Can't have a letdown. 39-3, to Texas on top. So many people that can attack you.